Welcome to some Red Green Werewolves. I hope you're excited for some transforming and some aggro. As far as the opening hand goes, yeah, I like it. We've got Forest, we got Mountain. We're going to keep on this one. And then uh, we do have Domri Raid to hopefully kind of maybe fight and keep Krinko off the battlefield. All we need is a little bit more uh, a little bit more land or ramp or something like that. Uh, let's go ahead and get the forest down, and then anything else, we're going to go ahead and pass the turn. Uh, we're playing Ulrich. Get back up here, man. It's not yet. It's not time to transform yet. Uh, whenever a creature enters the battlefield or transforms to Ulrich, uh, whenever this creature enters the battlefield or transforms, a uh, target creature gets plus four, plus four until end of turn. Then if no spells are cast, flip it. Uh, whenever this creature transformed into Ulrich Uncontested Alpha, you may have it fight target target non-werewolf creature you don't control, then during your trip, two more spells were cast, transform it, and I'll cover Krico in just a second. Let's go ahead and get the, uh, wonderful, let's go ahead and get the mountain down, and then anything else, go ahead and kick it over there. And we do have Wolf Fear Avenger in the hand, we just need one more green mana, and I'll kind of explain why that's important to this deck. Our play gets Krinko Mavos, tap, create X11 red goblin creature tokens, where X is the number of goblins that you control. So hopefully we don't get goblin out at this point right now. I know Krinko, uh, Krinko's pretty serious sometimes. He gets some good stuff going. But the main thing is our opponent doesn't really have any uh, the goblins on the battlefield, which is pretty good. Let's go ahead and get the mountain down. And I guess at this point, we just go for Domri. If it's a creature card reveal, it, but yeah, let's go and do that. Let's just get a little bit of pressure on our opponent. Um, we will Hopefully, if we keep making the land drops, we'll be online for Ulrich. We just need a second green source, but um, I'm okay with what we've got going on right now. Get the Ulrich Kindred. I love, absolutely love the art on this one with the green eyes with the red overtone. Oof, looks good. We'll go for the plus one on Domri. Get that going. At least it'll give us two fights. Yeah, we're going to put that in our hand. All right. Then we'll go ahead and pass the turn to our opponent. It's actually really good in this matchup because if our opponent gets down the, um, what is it, the, one of the Goblin Lords gives all the uh, Goblins haste. So we can actually get into spots where uh, we can get the hidden down and then uh, Ura Brass down to make sure that Krinko's, all the Krinko's Goblins come into play tap, which is the best way to have Goblins come into play when they're coming in a bunch at a time. But this is a very special deck. This is a birthday shout-out deck to my wife. She requested a deck actually around Wolfier Avenger. Um, she's not a huge Magic player, but it's one of her favorite Magic cards. She's like, I just want you to build a deck around that card or make a Magic deck, make a magic deck with that. And here we are. So I was like, oh, we'll make some red-green werewolves. I hadn't done red-green werewolves. It's been a... Uh, Popular commander request sometimes, and uh, I'm actually really excited to get it going. Kind of building the actual deck itself was a lot of fun, because there's a lot of cool, pretty stout uh, werewolf cards. You know, we've got stuff like Halpack uh, Resurgence, and there's a few other that I'll cover. All right, opponent's going to go for Wild Slash, two damage target creature or player, and I'm going to go ahead and redirect that over to Domri, which... We'll see if they're going to take care of this turn, if they're going to go for that play. But yes, this was her birthday request. It's her birthday today, so happy birthday to my wife. She... Uh, she puts up with a uh, a lot of magic playing over the time, and she's been very supportive of my channel, my hobby, and I greatly appreciate that one. So I just want to say happy birthday, and uh, it's also extra special that we have Wolfier Avenger in the hand too. So it's kind of a uh, kind of a special note. That's why I kind of made a, uh, high, a note of it at the beginning of the game. So we'll be sure and get that down. Hopefully, it'll be our main beat stick. All right, drawn to uh, the drawn to the shaman. Let's go and get the mountain down. Yeah, let's go and plus up on Domri. I can't really see us. Yeah, let's go and plus up on that. At least we can get one of the uh, Cult of the Waxing Moon. Okay, that's going to go into the hand. Um, is any certain way we want to... We can get down the Daybreak Ranger to kind of stop the subterranean scout from swinging in. That's what we're going to go for. Or we do have the uh, Ultra Kindred to get down. I think if we're going to go for anything, let's go and get the Kindred down. That way we can protect the Domri. I think I like that. It's going to be one, two, three. You know, if we end up losing a 3-2 uh, a body, that might be nice to kind of hold on to it for the indestructible with that 4 mana. But that is a little bit of a pricey activation. And I do like holding on to Daybreak Ranger because if we get it to flip, we can get it in spots where it can have it start fighting other creatures at a 4-4 four, four body, which is pretty good. And a good way to kind of keep Krinko off the battlefield because we're going to need to do something pretty soon. Worst case scenario, let's say our opponent does swing in with the Scout. Uh, we can chump block with the, uh, the Kindred. Excuse me, deals three damage to a creature player. All right, so we got like Goblin Burn or something like this. All right, it's going to take care of Domi Raid. It's not the end of the world. As long as we have some creatures on the battlefield, that's uh, that's pretty good. All right, so we draw to draw to the Wolfbriar Elemental. Um, let's go ahead and we can swing in for three. I think I like that. Yeah, let's go and swing in for three. Let's go and do that. That's going to be a wolf. I was trying to figure, if we want to go for the Halpack, no, let's get another body on the battlefield. Let's go for the Daybreak Ranger. I like that. It's going to swing in for three. It's going to put our opponent down to 27. And then we'll just keep our fingers crossed for a second green source. One, two. Get down the Daybreak Ranger. 
and then anything else. We're just going to go and pass it under our opponent. But yeah, as far as the deck goes, it's a pretty straightforward build of just red green werewolves. And um, like I said, there's a lot of good synergy in here. Um, one of the uh, definitely a good card in here is Wolfbriar Elemental. Um, it is an elemental, but we, it's a great way to, let's say, that we've just kind of uh, exhausted a lot of our resources. We have a lot of mana. We've done a lot of ramping. Um, with this elemental, we can just multi-kicker into a ton of wolves and really kind of get that going. And especially when you uh, kind of throw in something like Halpack or Surgeon, it's almost just like another wolf lord right there. All right. Opponent's going to get down Skirk Prospector. Now, that is something that we definitely want to take care of because if they can gain access to a lot of goblins, um, it's going to be pretty good... Uh, <laughs> They can access some pretty good mana pretty quick. Let's see what we draw into. Draw into the Silver Fur Partisan. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. Um, target creature with flying. We're going to be able to get them to flip, and then we can do that during our upkeep if we're going to go for the Daybreak Ranger. I think I'd like that. Let's just go and pass the turn. We're going to get those to flip during our upkeep and go for that Krinko. With the uh, the Daybake Ranger, it's going to be a 4-4 four, four body. It's going to get rid of that 3-3. Three, three. I think I like doing that. Yeah, let's go and do that. Okay. We're going to get the Daybake Ranger to flip. And we'll be able to use that red mana activation to take care of Krinko. So we're at least going to go ahead and force them to take care of it right now. <laughs> Nightfall Predator, love it. Jumping out from the forest, taking care of Krinko. <laughs> with this big old goblin knife. Okay. Opponent's going to activate Krinko in response to that. Get two goblins. It's still going to fight. The main thing is we keep... Uh, Krinko off the battlefield. That is the uh, the key issue. And then we also still have the Halpak Resurgence, so we're actually just going to go ahead and flash that in, and um, we can get that onto the battlefield. It'll be plus one, plus one for our werewolves, and they're going to have Trample, which allows us to kind of start swinging in. But I think for the main part, uh, we definitely want to get Nightfall Predator. Um, we want to take care of that Skirk Prospector. That's going to be a really good uh, Goblin Enabler for them, basically. Siege Gang Commander, okay. Because <laughs> that'd also be a good way for us to... Well, they can still sacrifice the Goblin Actually, now that I think about it, they can sacrifice two of the goblins and deal that damage to the Nightfall Predator, which is going to get rid of that fight ability. So we've got a pretty good matchup so far. Let's see if they're going to swing in with any creatures. It'll just be the Skirk process here. Okay, let's go to Flash in the Halpack Resurgence. It's going to be one, two, three. It's going to get plus one, plus one, and Trample. Okay. And then Beastmaster Ascension is the draw for the turn. I think at this point right now, yeah, let's go and force the uh, let's force the siege gang commander play. I, I like this one. We're gonna force it. And if they want to sacrifice the board state to kind of keep this off the battlefield, at least we get rid of that. So we don't have to play around that two mana, uh, two damage target creature player the whole game. You know, if they want to, they can sacrifice two goblins. Okay, I'm about to say they could sack two goblins and then go for uh, two damage to take care of it, but it's really not gonna help them out that much. And let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and. I'm going to swing in with a 4-3. Let's just go and pass the turn. I think if we go for the Beastmaster Ascension, we well, actually, no, we're not going to get him to flip. Let, let's go and do that. Let's go and get the uh, Silver Fur down. Once we kind of get that second green mana, we can really kind of open it up, and let's just kind of develop a nice board state to kind of start fighting some of these goblins. Get down the Silver Fur, and then anything else, let's just go and pass the turn. Because we also get in the spots where if we get enough creatures going, uh, we can get the Beastmaster Ascension online and uh, get those uh, get those attack counters going. Because really, the uh, the magic number for that is seven or more. So we're looking at maybe two or three uh, swing-ins. And we also have Urabrask in the hand, too. So we can make sure that our creatures have haste and make sure that our opponent's goblins come into play taps. Let's get Krinko Pot back up. Uh, but yeah, it's been fun throwing this deck together. And um, the funny story about Wolf Fear Avenger is that um, my wife, she doesn't play a ton of magic. But um, we play randomly. I built a few what I would consider just like bare bones, like tribal decks, like rats versus goblins. But uh, for some reason, she had seen this card before. She's like, hey, what's that one card where the guy's got his arms up and he's like flexing? And I'm like, man, that, that could be anything. I was like, I'm, I'm trying to think of it. And so something we went back and forth on trying to figure out what, you know, there's one night where we sat down for like 30 minutes. Ooh, ooh. Got the Erd down. Uh, we sat down for like 30 minutes, like going through my Magic Online collection, trying to figure out what card she was talking about. Could not find it. And then like flash forward a year, uh, she'd just gotten off work. I was working on a deck tech or something, and she saw Wolfier um, pulled up <laughs> like a Nemato green deck or something or saw it on my, uh, in my collection. She said, there it is. That card I was talking about a year ago. That's Wolfier. I was like, okay. Very random. But uh, just goes to show you that certain people like certain cards for certain reasons. And, you know, as a Magic player, you know, it's, it's an okay card. But, uh, yeah, to build a deck for her birthday with it.
pretty cool. I enjoy it. All right, but it's gonna be swinging in. That's gonna be uh, it's gonna be five. It's gonna be fifteen. Put us down to fifteen, which I think we're okay with that. Let's see if we can't get something on the back end. They've got the herd down. <sighs> Worst case scenario, we can kind of start jump blocking if we get another uh, drawn to cultivate. Oh, well, there we go. All right, let's go ahead and tap out for green. One, two. We can do a little bit of chunk block and kind of stop these goblins from coming across. Right, let's go double forest, double forest. One comes into play tapped. One's going to go to the hand. Let's go and make the land drop for the turn. And then I guess at this point, let's go and do this. Let's just go and pass the turn. We can at least chunk block with the Nightfall Predator. We do have one more fight token. I mean, we can activate the Nightfall Predator on one of the things. That's going to be them swinging in for 12. If we want to trade on some of the other creatures, we can definitely do that. Um, we'll see exactly how we can spread it out, though. But at least it's kind of going, getting into this holding pattern. We've got enough green mana now that we can finally get the Wolfbriar Elemental down. Kind of kick it, kick it a couple times. Um, we can at least kick it for one and get another body. You know, a 4-4 body against a bunch of 3-3 goblins would be a great another blocker. And then getting those wolf token downs will really help us kind of uh, take advantage of the uh, Halpack Resurgence. And then we'll try and get down the Wolf Avenger. But yeah, that was her um, one of her favorite favorite magic cards. That's why I made the deck. All right, Pope's going to get down Krinko. And it's not going to have haste at this point right now. We also have Cult of the uh, Cult of the Moon in the hand. So whatever permanent you control transforms into a non-human creature, you get a two-two Wolf token. So if we get in the spots where we get a few more of the um, werewolf token creatures onto the battlefield, um, I was doing a little bit of play testing. I had Cult down, and when you flip like three or four of those. And then you get a bunch of wolf tokens for your trouble. Ooh, feels pretty good. All right, see if our opponent's going to swing in or not. Looks like they're not. And then I guess at this point, we'll just go and go for the uh, Nightfall Predator on Krinko. Get rid of uh, Krinko out of here. Get out of here, buddy. Sorry, Krinko. We enjoy you, but we need to get the goblins off the battlefield. All right. And then we draw into Ancient Tomb. Let's go and get the Ancient Tomb down. Okay. Any certain way we want to sequence this. So we can get down the hidden. Now, as far as the Wolfbriar Elemental, that's just going to be one. Let's just kind of keep developing our board today. I, I think I like that. Let's go for the Avenger. It's going to have Flash. We can actually wait on that. Let's go for the, uh, let's go for the Shaman. That's going to be uh, one, two. We'll tap for one more green. If no spells were cast last turn, let's get that down. It's going to be one, two, three, four. We can go for the Beastmaster Ascension if we want to. But I think at this point, if we just simply need bodies swinging across, a full four body. Yeah, we're not going to get a lot of wolves off this one. Yeah, I think I like that. Let's go for the Wolf Briar Elemental. We're going to go and cast that. It's going to be one, two, three, four. We get into spots where we can go for Wolf or Avenger. They'll have haste off the, because uh, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we can actually next turn go uh, Ur Brass, get that down. That's going to be eight. It's going to be one, two, three, four. And we don't want to push in at this point right now. So we'll just go ahead and hold off. But yeah, we get into spots where we can swing in. That's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. We can get that going. And then we can follow it up with Ulrich to kind of give that a little bit of extra uh, damage coming across to get that Beastmaster Ascension going if we want to get that down too. So, and that plus five, plus five, that uh, really does add up pretty quick. But with the uh, the Cult of the Wax, there's a lot of really cool cards in here that... Um, kind of interact with the transform ability. In fact, we have Moonlight Hunt, which um, you can transform a creature and have it fight another creature. We also have Moon Mist, which is kind of like a, uh, like, like a combat fog that allows us to transform one creature and then have uh, prevent all damage that would be dealt to werewolves, which is pretty cool. And then we have the Waxing Moon, which is transform one, and then all your, uh, all your people get, uh, they get uh, trampled. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot what the word trample was for a second. Poe's going to get down Krinko. And then let's see what we're going to get going. It's a battle for Krinko on this one. I'm digging it. <laughs> I want to keep him off the battlefield. I'm drawn to Worldly Tutor. Okay. Let's go ahead and do this. We get down Old Ridge. If no spells were cast last turn, we get it transformed. We can have it fight another target creature. It's going to be a few more goblins on the battlefield. Let's do the, let's get down Herb. Yeah, let's get down Herb Brass. I like this. We one, two, three, four. Tap out for one more off that. They're all going to have haste, and our creature's opponents, um, our, yeah, our opponent's creature's going to enter the battlefield tapped. It's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. And then that's going to be five. 
that we can swing in with Ulrich next turn. Let's do that. Let's go ahead and get down the Beastmaster Ascension. That way, we, hopefully, we can kind of get into spots where we're going to force an Alpha Swing from our opponent, uh, or at least force an Alpha Swing on our opponent than anything else. I think we're just going to go ahead and pass the turn. We could swing in with a full four body, but yeah, we're working towards that Beastmaster Ascension. I kind of like that. And then we'll just kind of make sure we're on the same page. So we do have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have eight total mana, which will be enough for Ulrich. We can get that plus four, plus four ability. Uh, we're going to be able to cast Wolfier Avenger, uh, which is going to it's going to have Flash, but we're just basically going to cast it main phase. It's going to have haste off the uh, the Urabrask. And that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, with the plus four ability swinging in with an active Beastmaster Ascension. Um, seven more counters would be plus five, plus five. And they're going to have one, two, three, four. They're going to have four goblin creatures, but the main thing is they can only block with four goblin creatures. And if they activate Krinko, um, it's going to put them in a spot to where they're only going to have three blockers. So hopefully that plus five, plus five will be able to chunk in a nice, uh, pretty nice chunk of damage. Now we do have Worldly Tutor to go for, so should I be for a creature card, feel it, put it on top. So we'll see if we're going to end up using that or not. But, uh, but yeah, I've been really happy with the deck so far. I did a couple, a little bit of playtesting with it. So with it being the holidays, I didn't get a chance to make sure it's 100% fine-tuned. But uh, for what we're doing, it's pretty fun. All right, opponent's getting down. Chancellor of the Forge it enters the battlefield where X is the number of creatures you control. And once again, those are going to come into play tapped. I like that. Now, we'll see what they have to show for it. They have four cards in hand with an open Skirk Prospector. So at this point, they can activate Krinko and uh, really generate a ton of mana. So we'll see what they're going to be able to, uh, to do with it. This, they, they did cast a spell off the Chancellor, so we're not going to see any flips from our, uh, from our, <laughs> from our werewolves. But that's one of the fun things is... Uh, oh, there we go. Get those goblins into play. And this is going to lead two bond. Yeah, I think we're going to have a pretty good chunk of damage coming across. We'll see if we can't close it out on this one. But yeah, getting the transformer ability. I've never really, um, when I got into standard, I didn't really play red good werewolves, so or I never really played red green that much. And so to actually build a deck with all of the uh, the werewolves is pretty cool. All right, putting stacking out some mana. Let's see what they're going for. Bogart shenanigans. Another goblin you control is put in the graveyard. Deals one damage target creature or player. Target player, excuse me. So that's going to be 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That's going to be enough right there, I think. Whenever another goblin you control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you may have it deal 1 damage to target player. I think that's going to get it. They sack it out with the uh, the Skirk Prospector. We'll see, though. We'll go and force it, and we'll go and get that down. Gurk Wildspeaker. Okay, let's go and do this. Let's go ahead and go for the... Let's go for Ulrich. It's going to be one, two, three, four. Tap out for one more. Make sure we leave up double green for the Wolf Fear Avenger. And then we're going to give that plus three ability to um, give it to Old Rich. Let's go and go for the Wolf Fear Avenger. Get that down. We can regenerate it if we need to. It does have that regenerate clause. Just going to keep that of note. One, two, three. Flash that in. And then we'll go and push in with the whole crew. Get that active Beastmaster Ascension. But yeah, I think with that Bogart shenanigans, they can just completely sack it out oh that's a bummer we're going to push in though get the beastmaster triggers going always yes and then always yield and we'll see what's coming across we'll definitely have trample off old rich coming It'd be a nine nine oh yes 14 14 oh look at that board state okay so i guess i think if i'm correct with the bogart shenanigans whenever a goblin you control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield so they can sack the tokens and i think that will still count towards the uh, the shenanigans i may be wrong though but I think if they simply just sack it out with the Skirk Prospector, uh, they <laughs> they might be able to get it. I may be wrong on that one, but look, our opponent's throwing the good game up. So if it is, I'll take it. I don't know. But um, <laughs> either way, it's been fun playing Goblins versus Werewolves. All right, opponent's going to scoop it up. But yeah, I might be we might be right on that. Our opponent might have been able to kind of squeeze it out from there. But you can see where with this deck, you can kind of go wide with Beastmaster Ascension and, uh, you know, different stuff like Hal Pack Resurgence kind of get some stuff going. Um, as far as other stuff in the deck, that you know, I am going to be playing this on the channel a lot more too. So, um, it's, it's, you know, it's kind of nice to have a red-green uh, kind of aggro style deck. Outside of the, you know, stuff like Beastmaster Ascension, we're also running Bandic uh, Vanquisher's Banner, uh, Fervor, Fires of Yavi Maya to kind of give it haste, and then a couple more Planeswalkers. And, you know, we do see Gurk in the hand. We also have Domri and uh, Arlen, too, to kind of get those down. So be expecting more of this deck, and happy birthday to my wife. Thank you for being very supportive of my channel and the amount, the amount of magic that I play. So if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.